So you need to find outliers, and you know you think you have one, but do you really? We'll talk about how to get that figured out. Stay tuned. Hi, I'm Aaron Hayes. I teach AP Stats here. We're going to go through how to find outliers. Before we get started, like, subscribe, comment, all that other good stuff. I'll be redoing a bunch of my AP Stats curriculum this year, so hopefully that'll be helpful. Um, we're going to be talking about a situation here today about how to figure out outliers and what the rules are so we know we definitely have one or not. So, okay, so the situation is this, and we're going to do this in two parts, by the way. We're going to do the situation first, separate video. I'll kind of go more in depth in terms of the hows, the whys, and give you a chance to practice. In this AP Stats class, we've measured the heights of all these students. They're listed there, and then we made a dot plot in Staplet. And so we have them all listed there. As you can see, the center appears to be somewhere in the low 60s, but we do have a fair number of stragglers out here. So the question is, do we have any outliers? And if so, how does that affect what we're doing? So what we're going to do first is this. you got to find the median height. The median height turns out to be 63 inches. You can do that in a number of different ways. One way is to go through and basically just click off the highest two and then the next and you're going to just continue to do that until you find a number in the middle. Okay, and it turns out we're there at 63. Okay, you could also go through, and in this case, we have 21 items. And so, because we have 21 items, that means we know that we have to have the number in the middle, it would be the 11th term. We'd have 10 on one side and 10 on the other. Okay, remember your median is your middle value. And obviously, pause wherever you need to. Um, and all this stuff is based off of stuff of Statsmatic, so feel free to, or math at Mathematic, check that out too. Okay? So if we have two middle terms, you're going to average those, okay? And there'll be other examples this year. We'll be, have plenty of examples where we need to do that. Okay? So whichever way works best. If you have the dot plot, a lot of people like using the fingers. Otherwise, just find the middle term. Some people also, if you're going to do it where you're just looking at the data, make sure you put them in order first. Now, Q1 is the median of the lower half. So since 63 is in the top half, and it's going to be the 11th term, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So this right here is the 10th term. I'm going to look for the middle of that bottom half. And the median of the bottom half of Q1 actually falls between two terms. It falls between the 61 and 62, so we're going to average those two. So quartile 1, which is what's the name of that, is going to end up going through and going to be 61 and a half. So this is quartile 1, or first quartile. The third quartile, you're going to do the same thing. It's going to be from that second 63 all the way up to the 76. And so when you do that, you find two middle terms of 65 and 68. And again, we're going to average those two, so that average is going to be 66 and a half. So that's going to make up what's called our five-number summary. Oop, let me label that. That's our third quartile. We're going to talk more about quartiles and percentiles in Unit 2. But just sufficient to say quartile, the prefix is quart, so you're breaking things down into fours, like quarters. All right? So when we go down in here, and you've probably made this before, it's going to be called a box plot. Sometimes it's a box and whisker plot. So I've got this point up here at 77 is my maximum. My minimum is 55, 57. The median is right here at 63. And then notice here in this box here, those are my two quartiles. Some people do put lines down here at the end. College Board tends to do it, so you just have the lines. And then we're going to go through and we're going to find something called the interquartile range. We've talked about the range, how the range runs from the lowest value to the highest value, and you subtract the difference so you can find that. So what we need to find is the interquartile range, so the range between the quartiles, which would be Q1 and Q3. So to do that, we are going to subtract those two values, and we're going to get the number 5. So that's 5 inches. That means up over here, so again, that's 
This distance here is your interquartile range, IQR. Oh, and as I said, this over here is my five number summary. And you put them in order for obvious reasons. Now, over here, as a reminder, that's the width of the box. So how far is it from the lower end of the box to the upper end of the box? Why are we trying to find the IQR? A couple of things. It does tell you where the middle 50% is. Just remember, if you, um, if you were here for algebra 1, actually even algebra 2, each one of these areas has 25% of our data. Now, what we end up doing here is this. To find an outlier, we have a rule below. One of the rules is saying if an outlier is going to be on the small end, we need to go through and we're going to take Q1 and we are going to subtract 1.5 times the IQR. Okay? So for that in our advantage, our, there we go. Thank you, Smartport. So in our key here, the lower quartile is 61.5, and we're subtracting 1.5 times the interquartile range of 5. So that means that I need numbers that are lower than 54. So we don't have. So there's, and if we look back at our data, the lowest number we have is a 57. So we, we don't have any outliers here. So this has no outliers. Now we're going to do the same thing above, but we're going to take quartile 3, and we're going to add 1.5 of the inner, one and a half times the interquartile range there. Now, hold on, I'll get to the story here in a second. So now here, it's any number that's bigger than 74. Now, if you look back at our list, we do have 77s bigger than that. In fact, up over here, that's 70, actually 77 is the only one to go because here, this is going to be the spot. Anything bigger than that is going to be considered an outlier. And I'll show you how we're going to look that now. So what we end up doing here, so that's going to be 77. Make sure I space this out. Now, when you have an outlier, the, the way that your box and whisker plot is going to change is this. The next lowest number becomes the end here. Okay. And then from there, we are going to take off this. This disappears. And then I am going to put an asterisk where the outlier is. So we're still acknowledging the data exists. We're just saying it's way out of line for what we're expecting. So now here, Ashmita is 63 years, or 63 years tall, 63 inches tall. How does her height compare with the other AP students? Now, if I look at where that is, 63 happens to be the center. So you're going to describe what it's like to be at the median. So it is as simple as, or as straightforward, it's probably a better way of saying it. Hello? It is as straightforward as saying the following. Ashmita's height is the, at the median, so she is taller than about 50% of her class and shorter than about 50% of the class. The reason why we're not saying 50% specifically is depending upon how the median is, sometimes it's not exactly, for example, in this case, the median is an actual number. So she is just, it's almost 50% is lower, like because in this case here, we have 10 out of 21 kids are taller than her and shorter than her. So that's why it's about half. So anyway, I'm going to put a link down below for the next half. We're going to pause here so you can take care of things. Make sure that you click over, and we're going to summarize all this, and then we'll run through a couple of examples. See you in a bit.